President Obama's record-setting $4.1 trillion budget. He sent it to Capitol Hill, but already it's being met with hostility. This marks the last budget plan for this president and the last budget battle for him with Congress. Joining me to talk about is Representative John Yarmuth, Democrat of Kentucky. He's the second-ranking minority member of the House Budget Committee, as well as a member of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. He joins me from Capitol Hill. It's always good talking to him. According to what they're saying, based on the way the Congress lays out, this is not going to pass, is it, Congressman? Well, of course not. And uh, we, uh, the president knows that. Uh, we know it, those of us on the Budget Committee. What's frustrating, however, is that for the first time in 25 years, the Budget Committee is not even going to allow the uh, director of the Office of Management and Budget to come up to the Hill and present the president's budget. And basically, when our, our process for doing a budget is really a rhetorical exercise, but it's an important one because it's a statement of our priorities and values. And I think it would be important for the president to be able to contrast the values and priorities that his budget represents against what the Republicans are going to propose. Why, why would they not have Sean Donovan, the budget director, come up and speak for them? Well, I think they are actually afraid of the, the contrast. Uh, the president's budget makes some very important investments. It's very much future-oriented. It pays for itself uh, by raising revenues uh, without taxing any, any uh, individuals except very, very wealthy individuals. And on the other hand, the Republican budget, which we won't see until one day before we have to send it to the floor, uh, we know what it's going to be, though. It's going to be an austerity budget. It's going to slash programs like education, uh, support for uh, food stamps and, and other very important so social safety net programs. It's going to remove the uh, Medicare guarantee, and it's going to block grant Medicaid, which would allow states to basically deprive um, their citizens of health care. So all of these things, uh, I think, were, are very stark contrast. And, the, the Republican budget, by the way, if you remember, was the Paul Ryan budget originally and was disavowed by his running mate, Mitt Romney, in 2012. One of the proposals in the budget is a $10.25 uh, levy, levy tax on every barrel of domestically produced oil to fund trans on imported as well, uh, to fund transportation infrastructure. That seems logical. Uh, particularly with gas prices as low as they are, uh, if you're going to do anything to try and put a c cost on carbon, uh, a tax on some kind of price on carbon, this would be the time to do it. It has no chance, and I think probably some of our Democratic members would have a hard time voting for it because it will raise the price of gas slightly. But again, with they, I just heard today that they're predicting in some places in the Midwest, uh, gasoline is going to be below a dollar a barrel. So uh, this would be a good time to do it. Now, could some elements of the budget go, go on without endorsing the entire proposal? Well, it, it, yes, you, you, they would go through an amendment process just like any other piece of legislation. And when the Republicans introduce theirs on the February 24th, uh, we will then conceive amendments to pro, uh, propose the next day in what's called a markup process. And I, I suspect that some of what we'll do is take provisions from the president's budget and try to amend the Republican budget with them. What are your thoughts a couple of other areas? What are your thoughts on the results in New Hampshire last night? Um, well, I think it certainly was a, a blow for Hillary Clinton. I think the margin was something that most people didn't anticipate. But you have to remember that that's uh, the two states that have voted so far are states with, first of all, very white <laughs> populations, very few minorities, and also they're states where you can cross over and vote in, in either primary. Once she gets to states where there are closed primaries, like South Carolina is, like Kentucky is, where you can only vote in your own party's primary, I think she will do significantly better and will, will probably run the table on Bernie Sanders. In Iowa, for instance, even though it was basically a 50-50 race, she had a 17-point margin against Bernie Sanders among Democrats. So I think, again, as, as we get into more normal states and states with closed primaries, she'll re reassert her strength. Wouldn't you call on the other, on the other side? Yeah. On the other side, Trump continues to mystify everyone. I don't think there's anybody anywhere near this political game that uh, thinks that he could have sustained this kind of momentum for this long. 
Uh, he's going to have a little bit harder time in the South, but I think in a state like Kentucky, he'll do fairly well. Do you uh, foresee Bloomberg getting in? I think ultimately not. Uh, I think I don't believe he could possibly be for Ted Cruz or, or Donald Trump. In fact, he said that's the only reason he would get in if one of them was the nominee. And what he would do if he got in would basically guarantee their election. So I think he would, would probably undermine his own preferences in the race if he got in. And last summer, finally, Congressman, before you endorsed Hillary, you warned that the email controversy could hurt her. The FBI is looking into that. Do you have some fear there? Well, I think everybody uh, has a little bit of uh, hesitance or, or uh, a little bit of concern, but I, I accept her for a word that she's convinced that uh, nothing will come of it. Uh, the, the language that the FBI used in making their statement the other day was kind of vague, and it, it really it sounded to me like more like they were investigating um, kind of the system and the structure for handling emails rather than her specific activities. And as we, as we now know, both Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice were involved in the same kind of situation in which class of emails that they got on their personal equipment uh, were then subsequently reclassified. So, again, I don't really see any personal uh, vulnerability here for her, but I think the system will come under great scrutiny. Always good talking to you, Congressman. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you, Larry. Good to be with you. Congressman John Yarmouth, Democrat of Kentucky.